If you have your Bible, turn to Luke 2. We've been talking about dreams and the dreams of Zacharias and Elizabeth and God gave them a boy and my goodness, John the Baptist, what a boy. Eating locusts. What a boy. I guarantee you every pair of blue jeans that he had had a hole in the knees. Can y'all hear me? Just a, a wonderful time when the angel came and talked to Mary and said, Mary, highly favored one. You, God chose you to be his mom. Y'all get that? God chose you to be his mom. Where the Holy Spirit, God, and Mary, sinner, frail, human, came together so that Christ our Savior could be born. What a dream. What a dream. You know there was talk. You know there was whispers. You know there were wrong conclusions. But I guarantee you in heaven, everybody's going to say, you did good, Mary. You did good. And Joseph, he hears that the one that he's legally bound to is pregnant. You know what's going through his mind. You know what everybody is telling him. Not your fault. Not your fault. It's okay. Put her away. There will be another. But when the angel came and spoke to him and clued him in on what God was doing, how honored he had to feel as well and how obedient he was as he got up and he went to where Mary was, the blowing of the trumpet, the shout, and he was going to take her as his own. Now listen to me now. Baby bump and all. That first conversation that they had, when she explained to him what had happened, then he explained to her what the angel said to him as well. And how her heart was eased. And now he hears Mary's story and how he is, I'm going to say the word, excited. This was something beyond whatever they could do, but yet it was part of God's wonderful plan. And the embrace, I'm there for you. No, I'm there for you. I love you. I will always love you. No, I will always love you. And they got up from that place and went out and told the world, we are one together in the bonds of matrimony. We are one together in the bonds of love. And they began their life together. Now, Joseph did not know Mary in that way yet. But they were already legally bound and they understood that she was with child of the Holy Spirit. And they came together as one. And he took her home to the place that he had prepared. Can you imagine the conversations? How many of y'all husbands and wives remember that first week, the first month? Just to look over at the other one and say, she belongs to me. I get to begin every day like this. My wife spoiled me. If y'all have not figured out, the pastor loves coffee, right? And, and my wife would bring me coffee. And for those ladies who want to go tell my wife she doesn't need to be doing that, it's too late. She's already brought me in. <laughs> my mother-in-law said, don't you be doing that for him. If you start it, you'll have to keep doing it. By the way, she's still doing it. Makes me coffee. And just to look and to, to know the love. Y'all know what I'm talking about? How special that is. And those months together, all the conversations, all the whispers in the community, but they didn't care. 
They didn't care because they knew that God had a plan for them. Honored to be part of God's plan. They were humble, honored. You know they felt unworthy. They were blessed beyond measure. But you know they also had to be fearful and hesitant and anxious. Could you imagine raising and parenting their king? And then things changed and they had another wrench thrown into the works when a census, Caesar Augustus, let's talk about Caesar for just a moment. He was the first emperor of Rome. He was the uh, great nephew of Julius Caesar. Julius Caesar adopted him as his own son. After Caesar was killed, then this person whose name was Gaius Octavius and Mark Antony and another came together as the triumphant and they would lead together. And they did that until Antony and Octavius had a parting of ways and they warred and Octavius won. Now he is called Julius uh, Gaius Octavius Caesar. Excuse me, I said that wrong. Gaius Julius Caesar Octavius. That's the way it was said. And then when he became the what they called emperor, they called him Augustus. So he was Caesar Augustus, the very first. And he was smart. He was ambitious. But he was wise enough to know that though he ruled the the, the army that ruled the world, he couldn't do that all himself, or he would uh, appoint others over certain providences. So someone would be over Judea. Someone would be, be over Syria. Someone would be over all these different territories. Now, they were responsible to him. And 20 years into his reign, he, he said, we need to do a census because... Uh, we may want to tax everybody. They were trying to do a lot of building. And that's where we come to this place in Luke chapter 2 where we find that Joseph is having to take his bride there so that they could be registered. Would you, in honor of the reading of God's Word, would you just stand with us, please? God's Word says in Luke 2, verse 1, And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. That's really the city of their lintage. Joseph didn't live there. He was from Nazareth. But yet, that's where his tribe was, and that's where he went. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. Notice it's called the city of David. That's where the Messiah was supposed to come. He was of the lineage of David. That's to whom the Messiah was to come to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with, with child. She was still called betrothed because he had not consummated the marriage yet, but yet it was legal and they had actually become one except in that one point. They were doing house together. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought first, forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger where the cattle would eat. The straw was there. It became the bassinet of our Lord because there was no room for them in the inn. All the people from the countrysides going to the city where the census would be taken, the little town of Bethlehem was not, didn't have the infrastructure to do such a thing. 
So there were probably tents everywhere, probably things everywhere. And Mary found herself in a stable giving birth to her firstborn child. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, this is your word, and it is a privilege to be called a herald of your word. And I pray that today that I would do nothing but that, that I would speak the powerful name of Jesus, that I would read the words. But Lord, we ask that you bring the meaning to the words. We ask, Lord, that you bring it to our hearts, a story that we've heard so many times, a story that means so much to us. But I pray, Holy Spirit, by the power that you bring, that you would make it fresh to our spirit today because you have a word for us. You have an encouragement for us. You have growth for us. You have blessing for us. Your word is alive, and it is there for us to draw us close to you. Do it today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. Like it is for every woman when she has her first child, she began to feel the pains. Pains that go away, do not go away. Pains that accelerate. And you think you've got it until you don't. Ladies, these women who love to tell the war stories, women get together and they talk about birth and it's like, well, you're... Your birth, I had a 72-pound baby. <clears throat> and I did it all by myself. Bless your heart. Women love telling those stories, don't they? And My goodness, it does hurt, doesn't it? I remember when Lynn got the first pain. She said, oh. Then she grabbed my hand and I said, Oh, <laughs> and they, we had been through Lamaze. We had a certificate. We had graduated. I was the coach. I knew what to do. That meant keep your mouth shut, get out of the way, and said, honey, whatever you need me to do, I'll do. And I had the official stopwatch, and we were doing the labor. Now, I don't think Joseph went to Lamaze. I don't think he had a stopwatch. He's just looking at this woman that is now his wife, and he says, honey, what do I do? And she said, oh! There is that anxiety that crescendos into the place when the child comes. And she pushes. And then there was probably a midwife there, would you, th would you not think? I don't know. Scripture doesn't say it, but I would hope to think that in the place of Bethlehem, if there was a woman having a child in a stable, Donna, you would have been there, wouldn't you? There would have been a nurse by that would have helped in some way. And the change when the child is born and they lay it on the mother's stomach and the dads go, wow. Wow. And the nurse pick them up, and they clean them up. Praise God for the cleaning up. And they had that boy, my boy, wrapped up in a cocoon. I thought the boy couldn't breathe. They had that thing around him so tight. And they took it to Lynn, and they were going to hand it to Lynn. And she said, no, no, no. It goes to his dad. And I got to hold my boy. You think the midwife cleaned him up? You know what they had? Swaddling cloths mean strips of cloth. Strips of cloth. Y'all ever seen an old something that they just took it and tore it apart? And they begin to wind him up nice and tight. Now some traditions tell us that they put salt on the newborn babes. To preserve them, they thought. I don't know. But could you imagine when Joseph held the one that he knew would be the king most high? And the family was there. And the love 
was there. And there's something that only God can do. One moment is all that pain, and the next moment, when the mother holds the child, there's a smile. And all the pain is forgotten, and everything is fresh and new. Oh, what a night. Oh, what a precious, holy night. When they realized that they were holding the Son of God. Now, the angels in heaven, they couldn't take it. I mean, they did not know everything that God knows. They're simply a created being like our, we are. That means that they were a bystander. That means that as they saw it and as they began to understand, they began to know more fully about these things. Gabriel knew more because he was told more of God and, and, and he had a mission to do. That's what the word angel means. It is messenger. And Gabriel went and did his job. But as the other multitude, and I don't know how many multitude is, but as the multitude is there, they hear that one more is sent with a message, with a word to the shepherds in the fields. Look what it says in verse number eight. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. Now that tells us something a little bit there. These shepherds were not just out in the field. with the, They were living out in the field. And that means that most likely Jerusalem's right here. Y'all look at my map. Y'all see my map? <coughs> this is Jerusalem. About five miles south of it is a place called Bethlehem. So they're very close. But in between is the place where there would be the, the very special shepherds, the shepherds that were over sheep, that would be used, the holy sheep, for the sacrifices in the temple. Sheep without spot or blemish. When they were found, they would be brought there and they would be, they would be kept. This is a, a, a winter time. And other places, they would just not let sheep out in the field, graze wherever. There would be winter wheat out there, or there would be the fall wheat that would have, would have been taken, uh, the crop, and, and the ground would have been uh, tilled up for the, for the spring in preparation. But there was one place where sheep would have been out there and tending just out in the field, where shepherds would be there with them to guide them. Now, in, in church, we have people who have different roles. I'm pastor. We have servant deacons. We have teachers. We have everybody does a job in the church. And, and, and <coughs> yeah, I apologize. Some would say that that is a, a prestigious job. Others would say, no, this is a menial job. There are no such thing as prestigious jobs or menial jobs if you're serving the king. Right? And this is someone who is actually part of a, a very important ministry in the church, and they're out there. They're very, probably very uh, sacred people, probably people who are holy unto the Lord, and they're out there taking care of the sheep that would be the offering in the temple. When the angel comes, and look what it says in verse 9, Behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them. Get this now. And the glory of the Lord was there. It's shining around them. They were greatly afraid. How many of y'all, if someone came from the presence of God and the word that says the glory, they had no glory in themselves. But when you're around someone who has glory, it radiates off you. <clears throat> you're different because of who you're around. Bad company corrupts good morals. Is that not what Scripture says? But hear this. <clears throat> if you're in the presence of God, the glory of God will be there with you. It will radiate off you. Y'all ever been around someone who you knew had been around Jesus? And they talked differently and they prayed differently and they just looked differently. And When I was a kid... And, and y'all don't make fun of me, but, but when I would see the preacher up there around the pulpit, and he'd be preaching, sometimes I could see a white glow around him. Have any of y'all ever seen that? Just me? Some of y'all have? Say amen if you've, if you've ever, ever, ever seen that. See, it's not just me. 
Now, I will tell you, if you ever see it around me, you will know one thing for sure. It's not me. But praise God if the glory of God is encompassing me. And they saw the glory of God. And it was so different that obviously they were afraid. And once again, they say the same things that they always say. Verse 10, do not be afraid for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. I got a good word for you, for there is born to you. Did you see the personal part of that? For there is born to you this day in the city of David. When when they say city of David, you know they know the word of God. They know what it's talking about. A Savior who is Christ, the anointed one. The Messiah, the one who will come and save his people. He is born this day for you. They've read about this. They've looked for this. They've longed for this. They've wanted this. God, give me voice. And they come. This will be the sign you will find. If you look, you'll find a babe wrapped in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. In a manger? We wouldn't find a baby in a stable where the cattle, laying in a place that the cattle eat. Yes, you'll find a baby. And the multitude couldn't take it. Look what it says, verse 13. Suddenly, there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host. He is the Lord of hosts. You know what that means? All. That's what the word host means. He is the Lord of all. And the heavenly host praising God. And their praise is pointed, glory to God in the highest. But by the way, and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. How many angels, preacher? The Bible says multitude. They're down there, shepherds. Now, y'all know what I mean when I say 2D? Y'all got that? We know up and down, we know side to side. Y'all know what I mean when I say 3D? There might be rows. Y'all ever seen a picture of a crowd? And and you could see, but then you could see beyond them, and see beyond them, and see beyond them. First church I ever, or excuse me, I, I did church planning in Gwinnett County. We, we began with five families. I quickly grew it to three families. <clears throat> We began in a dance studio. We outgrew the dance studio, went to an aerobic studio, and then we outgrew it and we went to a pool hall. And, and it was an old pool hall. We didn't use it as a pool hall. That would have been a different church setting. But in the dance studio, they had mirrors on this wall and they had mirrors on this wall. Remember barber shops that were kind of like that too? You had them on both walls. And there'd be 20 of us in there in this, in this dance studio, but with the Guess what? With the mirror on this wall and a mirror on that wall, it just went on and on. It looked like we had 500 people in there because you could just see it and it went to the next dimension and the next. Come on, why am I ta- wasting time by saying that? They saw something that was beyond comprehension. I want to tell you the sky was full. Don't you think the angels were up there like going, can we go? Can we go? And God goes, Go on. Y'all ever said that to your kids? Go on. And they buzz and they get there. And you know what? They just have to say, praise God. Glory to God. You see, now it's coming clear to them. Now they're starting to understand this. This is Scripture, folks. This is Isaiah. Can I read it? Isaiah 9 verse 6 says, For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders. His name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, 
mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of the increase of His government, His peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over His kingdom to order it in establishment with judgment and justice from this time forward, even forever, the zeal, the passion, the love's desire of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Oh, what a night. So the shepherds, they had a word. So it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, well, let us go now go. I mean, don't just tell me this and us say, oh, good word, we'll just stay here. Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord um, And they came with haste. And they found Mary. That meant they had to look for him. And Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. Verse 19 is very important. And Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Joseph did too. It's real. The Son of God has become the Son of Man. God has come to this earth. The virgins just had a child. You know what they were? May I take off my coat? The heat's on in here and the temperature's above the heat because I got a lot of hot air in me. It's kind of warm in here. You know what they... You know what they saw? They saw God. They saw the King. They saw the Master. They saw Scripture fulfilled. And their hearts overflowed. When you're in the presence of the King, everything changes. It doesn't matter what you face. It doesn't matter the hardships of life. They come, don't they? They come pretty regularly. But when you've got the king with you, everything's going to be okay. When God's there, he can make sense out of nonsense. He's a whisperer away, folks. The Lord of all. Second Chronicles 16, 14 says, the, Lord, the eyes of the Lord look to and fro throughout all the world looking for those whose hearts are loyal to Him, that He may bless them. You understand that in this world today where so many people have forgotten church, where so many people are bought into the things of the world, we, I, I saw a news thing this morning that said, today there will be 142 million Single shoppers out there getting their last-minute Christmas shopping done. 142 million that are going to be out there getting that last gift. And I wonder how many of them know that Christ is the reason. I wonder how many of them know it but just forget it because of the hustle and bustle. How many people's lives are so revolved around anything else and everything else, but the Almighty is there and He's looking for someone that He can, that he can bless, that He can be strong to, someone that He will show Himself strong. And get this, church, we have an opportunity this day to be in the presence of Jehovah. Those of you who know me know that uh, I don't like to sing in church. I like to sing with the church. And um, y'all also know that I got this big lump in my throat that God's going to take care of next year. 
And um, it's getting to the place where I'm hoarse and I'm having trouble swallowing. And a couple of weeks ago when I was praying over this, God put a song on my heart. There's a difference when it's Brian puts a song in his heart and I worship in him praise to the Lord. But y'all know what I mean when the Lord leads you to something, I'm like, Lord, that doesn't make sense. Number one, they don't want to hear me sing. Number two, I don't want them to think that I believe that I can sing well. I know preaching has kind of ruined my voice. Maybe I have a preaching voice now, and if that's the case, amen, hallelujah, praise God. But I also know that I might not be able to keep my voice, and if that's okay, you know, if the Lord, if that's part of God's plans, I'm cool with that too. I have no anxiety about it whatsoever. But I just, you ever tried to talk yourself out of something that God wouldn't let you talk yourself out of? And I've heard people say in church, oh, don't listen to how I sing it. Just listen to the words. Y'all ever heard anybody say that? Most of the time they don't mean it when they say that. But I'm gonna, I want to I wanna sing to you what I sing to the Lord. <laughs> As my voice cracks. What I sang to the Lord two weeks ago, and I meant it two weeks ago, and I mean it today. I'm going to do it a cappella. Mark, I might change keys a few times. I don't know. It will not be on purpose. Because of Eli, I got some water. But church, listen, this is my heart. <clears throat> In and out of situations that tug of war at me. All day long I struggle for answers that I need. Then I come into His presence all my questions become clear. And for that sacred moment, no doubts can interfere. For in the presence of Jehovah, God Almighty, Prince of Peace, Troubles vanish, hearts are mended in the presence of the King. Through His love, the Lord provided a place for us to rest, a place to find the answer. In our hour of distress, <laughs> now there's never any reason for us to give up in despair. We just slip away and breathe His name because He will surely meet us there. For in the presence of Jehovah, God Almighty, Prince of Peace, troubles vanish, hearts are mended in the presence of the King. You know, one day, I don't know when, the Lord's going to call my name. One of my friends that loved me dearly, I don't, because of grace, Jimmy Eccles went to be with Jesus Friday. Friday night. I went to see him a while back. Lynn and I went to see him. He said, Preacher, I'm just dying. I'm just here dying. 
I'm, I'm just dying. I don't know why the Lord don't take me. I'm just here, just sitting here dying. I said, you're not going to die until God's ready for you to die. When God calls you, who's an on-time kind of God? But when He calls you, you'll be in His presence. Just as it was for Mary and Joseph and the shepherds and everybody who was there. Just as it is with Brother Jimmy this morning. Just as it is for my parents and your parents if they knew the Lord. So many that matter. Listen to me now. Forever more in the presence of Jehovah. But you don't have to wait to heaven to be there. Anybody got life struggles? Anybody got difficulties? Anybody have questions that there doesn't seem to be an answer for? Anybody wake up in the middle of the night with anxiety where you run it through your head and run it through your head and run it through your head? But you get to stand in the presence of God and you get to praise Him in belief. And you get to praise His name in trust. And you get to tell Him how grateful you are that He's there for you. And that you know that He will take care of you. And that you know He'll be there for those that you love. For my granddaughter who's not saved yet, I pray, I pray. I want to take all my friends with me. And in this crazy town of indecision and in broken homes and broken lives, they need the church to be the messengers, the herald of Christ to tell them that there is a child that was born for them. A son was given. A Savior who is Christ the Lord. He's the only answer, church. And if they find Him, they can find the presence of the Almighty. And if you want to bow your heart to Him, you can be in His presence right now.